Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, in this video today, uh, on this lecture, sorry, I'm going to talk to you about the uh, anatomy of the heart. Already the presentation, I sent this presentation to your colleague Bilal. And uh, this presentation, of course, uh, it's around, uh, I would say, 60 uh, slides for this presentation and the presentation of Wednesday. So, let me start uh, describing the uh, position of the heart and the shape of the heart. I think from the previous uh, presentation, you have an idea about the position of the heart that's located in the middle mediastinum, not in the posterior, not in the anterior. So this is the heart, guys, that's located in the middle mediastinum and then covered by pericardium. So... If you look to the heart, you would see that it looks like a pyramid. You know, the pyramid sits in this shape. So this is the base of the pyramid, and this is the apex, because the apex is always opposite to the base. So this is the base, and this is the apex. But the heart, it looks like a pyramid, but the direction of the apex of this pyramid is different. The apex of the, this is the apex of the heart which is directed downward and forward. Usually we know that the pyramid sits on... Uh, uh, I think you hear me, guys, right? And you see the shared screen, isn't it? Yes, Doctor, we hear you. Okay, thank you. So we know usually that the, uh, the, the pyramid sits on its base, but the heart does not. This is the base of the heart. So... Simply and from the end, the heart sits on its diaphragmatic surface. This surface of the heart that that's located against the diaphragm, this surface of the heart is known as diaphragmatic surface because it's against the diaphragm. So, what we have in the heart simply, we'll talk about uh, these uh, uh, things. We'll talk about the apex of the heart the pace of the heart, and this surface, the anterior surface, and we'll talk about the diaphragmatic surface that's against the diaphragm. And if you look laterally, or if you dig deep in the heart and look to the lateral rotation of the heart, you would say that it's bounded laterally by right and left lung. Right lung and left lung. Those also covered by uh, visceral and parietal pleural membrane. So, this surface of the heart from the right and this surface of the heart from the left, <clears throat> they are known as pulmonary surfaces because they are against the, uh, <clears throat> the lungs. Furthermore, we'll talk about the Chambers of the heart. The heart divided, guys, into uh, four chambers. Sorry. This is right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. Okay, let us start with the apex. The apex is so important. So, I would say you have to expect a question in the exam about the apex of the heart. Clinically, is important for many reasons. So, first of all, let us define the position of the apex of this pyramid, of the heart, I mean. So, first of all, it's located in the left side. You see this uh, uh, black dotted line? This is a uh, midline. So, the apex of the heart which is mainly formed by the left ventricle, LV, right? I will use this pin, right? So the apex formed mainly by left ventricle, directed downward and forward to the left. At the fifth intercostal space, what does it mean? Okay, this is the fifth rib, and this is the sixth rib in between, this space is known as fifth intercostal space. Anyway, okay, it could be here, it could be here, it could be 
here. But how can I uh, determine exactly where is the apex of the heart? Of course, you can palpate it, guys. And you can see even the pulsation. But it doesn't work. So simply, and from the end, I would say the apex of the heart located at the left fifth intercostal space, eight to nine centimeters away from the midline. This is the midline. Go around eight to nine centimeters. It's written here, right? So this is the apex of the heart. So I know maybe it takes like too much efforts to measure. and There is an easier way. Let me show you. So this is the left clavicle, right? Just mid of a clavicle, if you go all the way down to, uh, to, uh, to draw a, a mid-clavicular line. So this is the rib number five, and this is rib number six. In between, this space is the fifth intercostal space. This is rib number five, right? And this is rib number six. So, okay, where is exactly the apex? This is the apex of the heart. So it's located at the left fifth intercostal space at simply mid-clavicular line. Just draw an imaginary line with your eyes. Okay, this is the apex. Thank you. This is important. Now, okay, we talked about the apex of the heart for many by left ventricle, where is that, the location, and we have, okay, we have the apex, and on the other hand, we have a pace for the, that pyramid, for the heart. This green line indicates the location of the pace of the heart. Guys, we are looking to the heart from the back. heart <laughs> ومن تحت هذا الدياغراماتيك سيرفس هذا مش من الامام رايت سو ذيس از ذا بيس اوف ذا هارت ذاتس فورمد مينلي باي ليفت اتريوم اند رايت اتريوم اند ات هاز روتس فور فينز including small veins like pulmonary veins on the right and on the right and on the left and you have the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava so all of these structures located behind form the something called the pace of the heart again this is the pyramid which looks like the heart this is the apex and this is the pace this is the base. So, the base directed backward, please keep it in your mind. And let me uh, raise these things. Okay, so if this is the base of the heart, it's located at the level of T5 up to. T8. This is in lying position. But in standing position, this surface anatomy landmark will be chain. So it becomes like T6 and T9. Just a plus one, right? Plus one. One Still, we have um, one thing I have to mention. This is again the base of the heart. You know, the base of the heart separated from the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. This is the diaphragmatic sphere. That means this part of the heart located against the diaphragm. Anyway, this the base of the heart separated from the diaphragmatic surface of the heart by a sinus. This is a sinus known as coronary sinus. There are a couple of structures in this sinus. So, uh, the this coronary sinus, guys, 
um, uh, uh, coronary sulcus, sorry, has a couple of structures. But why is called coronary sulcus? First of all, it encircles it encircles the uh, 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 the the whole uh, top of the heart. Now, let us uh, imagine that this is the uh, uh, queen. This is the queen. I'm not a good guy in uh, drawing. So this is the. Let us draw like a crown here. This is the crown at the top of the queen. So it encircles the upper top of the heart. يعني هذا التاج تبع الملكة. ف it's called the crown, right? So this crown, which is you know when you say coronary, it means taji. That means something like crown. So if you imagine the heart like a head of a queen, and if you imagine that. You will see that, and it's important to understand it. You will see that this sinus encircles the whole of the heart, from anterior, lateral, and posterior. Okay, guys, let us see. Uh, uh, no, before that, this is the base of the heart. There is one important thing I would like guys to know. That, look it here. This is the sternum anteriorly. And this is the vertebral column posteriorly. And this is the apex of the heart. Of course, we finished the apex, but this is the base of the heart that's located posteriorly. You cannot see the base from the front, no. So this is the base of the heart that's located posteriorly. And immediately, this is an important point, keep in your mind. So the base of the heart located, you know, posterior relation to it is the esophagus. This is the esophagus. So esophagus located immediately posterior to the base of the heart. So this is one important thing. Sorry, let us look to this diagram. I'm sorry, I have to uh, record a pericardium lecture, guys, for you and uh, soon today. But this is the pericardium of uh, fibrocerus um, sac in which the heart located here, but we remove the heart. So now we are looking to the posterior, um, uh, to the heart, posterior surface of the pericardium. Look at here, there is a kind of ridge, small ridge and a kind of elevation. At the first, this is the location of the left atrium. Remember, this is the left atrium because the base of the heart formed mainly by left atrium and right atrium. So this is the uh, left atrium and this is the location again of left atrium. If you open this serous sac, had a fibrous sac, you will find, uh, the, you will find the esophagus here. So let me erase it, okay. So this is the shadow, this is called esophageal prominence. Many people don't know that the esophagus lies immediately posterior to the base of the heart, lies immediately posterior to the left atrium. It's important, yes, it's important. Keep it in your mind. So the base of the heart separated <laughs> As at the, at the end from the vertebral column by esophagus and descending aorta. You can say descending aorta or thoracic aorta. It's the same. It's up to you. Okay. Excellent. So we finished the apex, the base of the heart. That's in from the back. Let us now talk about the anterior surface. This is the anterior surface of the heart. That's located against the sternum and ribs, right? So the anterior surface it's it's known as sternocostal because it's against the sternum and cost I mean ribs and cartilage. So <clears throat> so this is the anterior surface. Sorry, this is the anterior surface of the heart. So it's formed by let us just imagine the heart 
You don't have to memorize everything, guys. Sometimes, if you imagine correctly, you can answer any question. So, it's formed by right atrium, right ventricle, and part from the left ventricle. Those form the anterior surface of the heart. So, what else? A big space, anterior surface. Okay, we have a diaphragmatic surface. This is the diaphragm. You see, it's pulled back and inferiorly. This is the, um, this is, uh, of course, this is a fibrous, uh, this is the pericardium, fibrous or sac, and this is the diaphragm. Anyway, this surface of the heart that's located against the diaphragm, known as diaphragmatic surface, in which you have to know that the heart sits on its diaphragmatic surface. And with the sar, the galb guard on this surface, meaning a diaphragmatic surface. Let us look at this figure. You are looking to the heart from the posterior view and inferior view. This is again the base of the heart. But, sorry, the heart doesn't sit on the base. No, this is the base. The heart doesn't sit on the base. The heart sits on the diaphragmatic surface, on this surface. This is from the end. Okay. So, uh, again, uh, the uh, diaphragmatic um, surface, again, imagine, when you remember this figure, you will say, okay, this is the diaphragmatic surface, the surface at which the heart sits uh, uh, on the diaphragm. So, it's formed mainly by left ventricle and right ventricle. The, if you look to the base of the heart, you would see again that separated from the diaphragmatic surface. We mentioned that before a couple of slides, but I'm sure you couldn't understand what I'm saying. The uh, base of the heart separated from the diaphragmatic surface of the heart by a sulcus that's called coronary sulcus that loads coronary sinus in it. Coronary sinus is vein. Vein is a sinus, J And other structures. We'll uh, talk about that. So, I don't know, what's this? Okay, we mentioned that. So, guys, uh, I would uh, say this. We mentioned at the beginning of the... Uh, of the lecture that uh, the heart divided into four chambers. These chambers are four, including right atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, left atrium. So we have right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. Keep in your mind that right atrium is anterior to left atrium they are not they are, the heart doesn't look like okay right left right left no look it twisted to the left so the right atrium anterior to the left atrium the right ventricle anterior to the left ventricle anyway Keep it in your mind, guys. So, what I'm going to say that the, the division for these chambers, in order to create these chambers, there are septa, interatrial septum, interventricular septum. For example, this is the uh, right, this is the right ventricle, and this is the left ventricle. In between, internally, in the they are separated by a wall known as interventricular septum. Interventricular, why? Because um, it's between two ventricles. But this division internally it creates a kind of features outside. 
Features like what? Like this groove, uh, or sulcus, sorry, not groove. This is like this sulcus, either, anter uh, either anteriorly, or if you look to the, uh, from the back and the, inferior to the uh, and the inferior surface of the heart, you see also there is another sulcus here. يعني باختصار الشامبرز من جوا لما بتتقسم بسبتم التقسيمة هاي بتعمل زي الآثار خارجية على الهارت زي السلكس for example now this سلكس for example for example the 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 uh, the this anterior interventricular sulcus because it's interventricular sulcus because it's like a groove a little bit that was what's called sulcus and between two ventricles between right ventricle and left ventricle that's why it's known as interventricular and anterior because it's from the anterior surface of the heart but if you go back to the posterior surface of the heart you would say you would see sorry the posterior interventricular sulcus also it's between the right and left uh, 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 ventricle so this is sorry the left and this is the uh, right uh, ventricle anyway so that's this is, that's why the uh, uh, they named like this okay now let us go back again to the um, external features because you know above this sulcus coronary sulcus that encircles the heart like a crown above it there is atria right uh, the uh, uh, right atrium and left atrium below it we have right ventricle and left ventricle but this sinus, the coronary sinus, has a couple of structures. Like, for example, the coronary sinus that drains the blood from the heart itself. From the right, the coronary sinus, this vein, drains the blood from the right side of the heart through a small vein, a small cardiac vein. If on the right side there is a small cardiac vein, on the left side there is a great one. Great cardiac vein. We'll talk, guys. There are much of details about the coronary arteries and vein in the couple of weeks. I will give you a lecture about that. So I will not go in details about that. But just to know that the coronary sinus drains the blood from the heart itself. From the right through a small cardiac vein, from the left through great cardiac vein and in the middle there is posteriorly there is a middle um middle cardiac vein this one so all they drain here in the coronary sinus and the coronary sinus will drain in the right atrium this is important the coronary sinus drains into right atrium i will show you the opening of this vein of this sinus However, most importantly at this level to know that in the this sinus, in the coronary sinus, there is coronary uh, coronary sulcus, there is coronary sinus, there is also small cardiac vein, there is a great cardiac vein, there is the right coronary artery, this one. And there is a branch from the left coronary artery known as circumflex branch. يعني الدائرة المرتد يعني. I will show you. Okay. This is one of the external features of the heart. Coronary sulcus. Let us see other sulcus. Other sulci. Anteriorly, on the anterior surface of the heart, as I mentioned, there is a sulcus between two ventricles, right ventricle and left ventricle. So, it's anterior. Interventricular sulcus, in which it lodges the anterior, the same name of the artery. The arteries take their names from the from the sulci, either the anterior one or the posterior one. So this artery that uh, lodges 
in this sulcus known as the same name anterior interventricular branch of course if left coronary artery because this is the left coronary artery don't worry about it we'll talk later after a couple of weeks about that because you have right coronary artery and left coronary artery on the other hand if you look to the uh, diaphragmatic uh, surface you would you will see not the anterior interventricular it's also sulcus between two ventricles the left and right but from the back so it's known as posterior interventricular branch uh, it's posterior interventricular sulcus that has also an artery that takes the same name posterior interventricular branch not anterior interventricular branch no posterior interventricular branch plus the middle cardiac vein this small vein So, we finished the, uh, we covered, sorry, the apex, base of the heart, anterior surface, diaphragmatic surface, um, external features on the heart, anterior or posterior, coronary sulcus, and so forth. Now, it's the time to talk a little bit about the borders of the heart. Well, it's very simple, just in it's it is going to be difficult to memorize the borders of the heart except if you imagine just imagine this figure then you will answer any question about that so this is the right border and this is the left inferior and superior simply the right border i'll use another pen okay the right border formed mainly by right atrium but the left border formed mainly by left ventricle because this is the apex, right? Plus left atrium, part of left atrium. And inferior border, if you, you, you see this is the inferior border, which is between, if you remember, the anterior surface of the heart and diaphragmatic surface. Anyway, it's formed mainly by um, the right uh, ventricle and the apex or apical part of left ventricle. Mainly because this is the right ventricle and this is the left ventricle. Of course, the left ventricle located to the back more, right? Don't say, oh, this is just small left ventricle. No. Because I mentioned that the right ventricle anterior to left ventricle. Now, the last border, guys, is the superior border. Here is the superior border, formed mainly by two atria. Right atrium, left atrium. From this border, there is um, two big arteries emerge from the pulmonary trunk and the ascending aorta this part of aorta is the ascending aorta and at the sternal angle it becomes arch of aorta again at the sternal angle it becomes descending aorta so we have three parts we have three parts uh, ascending arch and descending aorta 